What's up, everybody? This is another episode of Fun and Truth in Black and White with Pat and Jay. I'm Jay. I'm Pat. What's up, people? What's up, Pat? Yo, we're back. We're back on the air. Seven months, man. It's good to be back. It's good to hear your voice. Yes, it's good to be alive and healthy during the pandemic and during the current status of the world we live in. And um, just to bring the listeners in, we've tried to record a comeback episode. It's it's been difficult. I mean, we tried to do it, of course, virtually for safety, but it's been difficult emotionally dealing with everything that's going on in the world. And uh, thank you for your patience, but let's get it in. Yeah, man. So today's episode is exposure. Pat, what are we talking about? Um, we, this podcast focuses on relationships and uh, primarily their romantic or intimate relationships, but really it's all relationships and the curtains have been pulled back on society and now everyone's being exposed for who they are, for better or worse. And we received an email today from a faithful listener that shared with us a very exposing encounter they had. Jay, why don't you tell us about that email? Yeah, so um, just to back up a little bit, people, so obviously this is our episode in, in a couple of months, actually more than a couple of months, and we're happy to be back and um, have your support. Um, but uh, we also have a new format, and that's part of uh, what this is all about. So the rundown is, obviously, we want to talk about um, uh, what's been going on in the world. And um, one of the things is uh, Karen and the truth about white women and uh, pandemic situations and post-pandemic relationships. So we're going to get into a couple of things here. But the email is from a, uh, a listener. He says he's a white man who is married to a black woman. They have two young kids. They're mixed. Uh, they live in an affluent neighborhood. And in their normal weekly walk around the neighborhood, they, they had an encounter with their first Karen. And he was a little bit um, angry, disappointed, um, shaken up by it, all sorts of emotions going around. He, and he brought it to us because he wanted us to discuss the truth about white women in this uh, overall uh, reality of relationships. Um, so, so, so what exactly happened on their walk? Okay, so so basically what he's saying is is that they walk around the neighborhood with their kids um, on the weekends, and most of the people in the neighborhood know them and are very, very friendly to them. And normally when they walk, they don't wear masks because they don't want the kids to be traumatized by having to wear masks all the time, number one. Um, but they avoid people, number two. So they're very careful to not come close to anybody if there are people coming towards them they'll cross the street whatever um so so their option not to wear a mask is is also based on the fact that they're not around a lot of people in any case this um this time they were walking by a bus stop and there happened to be a white woman wearing a mask and um as they walked by his wife said good morning and the woman chastised them about not wearing masks and then proceeded to say, you're in my space. And so his wife turned around kind of smiling and was like, really, is it that serious? And the woman went on to say, the white woman went on to say, you shouldn't even be in this neighborhood. You're not welcome here. And so he got into it with the white woman and, and literally said, you know, are you serious right now? You know, because again, there was, uh, apparently there was also an Asian man who was standing at the bus stop too. So he got very angry, but at the same time, very quickly realized that uh, she wanted to pick a fight. The white woman wanted to pick a fight. So he kind of laughed because he was like, why are you trying to fight? And then on top of which, she said, I can say anything I want. And he and his wife agreed with her. They didn't understand, you know, why she was uh, bringing so much contempt at them when his wife literally said good morning, number one. And number two, when, you know, she made it about uh, race, 
the both of them just looked at her and said, you're really going to go in that direction right now. And she wanted to pick a fight with them. So uh, he sort of, you know, looked at this from the standpoint of bringing it to us to expose the truth about white women in terms of their role in advancing racism and, you know, truthfully, you know, he also wanted to, you know, explore, ask us to explore, are white women more responsible for white supremacy than white men are? Okay, first question. First, let's shout out the author of the email was Jared, I believe. Is that correct? That's Thank right. you very much for contacting Fun and Truth, number one. So here's my take. With exposure, you, you have baggage and you present baggage even when it's inappropriate. So what I mean is she has a point regarding, you know, you're not wearing your mask. And I say that because I was just in a pharmacy the other day and you know, they had the tape on the floor six feet apart. And it's still something I'm adjusting to. I was wearing a mask, but I ended up being about two feet from the guy in front of me. And he turned and looked at me and the look he gave me immediately reminded me that I should have been six feet behind him. I didn't take offense to that. And just with body language, I acknowledged what he noticed and I stepped back. And I think that she had a point, but you see how she has a point, but then take it, took, took it somewhere it didn't need to go. Oh, it went so far south according to what this you know, email is saying. Right, and, and, and so now we have to examine why that is. So the first subject is already done because you, uh, Jared and his wife weren't wearing masks. Okay, that was pointed out to them. They were already practicing major social distancing, crossing streets and you know, a, away from this woman at a bus stop. So that really isn't the issue. Because that was the issue, that would have been resolved within seconds. The issue was, why is Karen so upset? Right. Now, anyone that knows me or listens to me knows I hate generalizations. So I don't really even like the label of racist white women as Karens, but I get it, because for the sake of this conversation, you know, it makes sense. So here we are. So now, um, why? What is she carrying with her? By the sounds of it, she's been living in this neighborhood for a long time. And by the sounds of it, she does not like any diversity in her neighborhood. You mentioned, or the email mentioned, it's an affluent neighborhood. But again, why? What's the root cause as to why she's so angry? You know, when a neighbor moves in on my block, if they're quiet and clean, those are the only boxes they have to check for me to be happy. Mm -hmm. I don't care where you're from, what religion you practice, how you look. I mean, it'd be nice if you have kids because I like kids, right? You know, that's just me. But that's not like a, it's a preference. It's not a prerequisite. I don't care you're not breaking any laws, we're good, right? But clearly, she has an issue with what Jared and his wife represented. And that is a core fundamental problem, not only with this situation, but with the country and the planet. What do you say to that? So Pat, our, our, our show is Fun and Truth in Black and White. And, you know, we have an opportunity here to really have some fun with this particular because Karen uh, is a representation just like, uh, you know, some people would talk about the N-word. Um, it's meant to be offensive and it's meant to uh, bring attention to the fact that, uh, you know, white women are abusing a power that they have um, by caring about issues that really don't concern them, number one, but also um, using their 
crocodile tears uh, and saying that they're being attacked or threatened in situations that we're not, and, and that they're not. And, and let's use Amy Cooper as, as a perfect example there, where she was the woman in Central Park who, you know, called up 911 and, and, you know, made a false police report about a black man threatening her. And, and this is not new. I mean, let's go back to Emmett Till. You know, huge case in the 1960s, a young boy, you know, who happens to be, you know, uh, uh, you know, black skin color, um, you know, is killed because a white woman claimed that he raped her. So, you know, you have to appreciate that the exposure of what's happening right now in society is that people are no longer willing to tolerate this behavior. And they're bringing attention to it and they're bringing it to us on this show to say, hey, let's have some fun and truth with this. Let's really get into it. Now, I, as a, uh, a, a white man, you know, could take this two ways, but, you know, obviously, you know, you and I have fun with this, you know, in terms of race. One of the things that I like to point out is that this is a difference between looking at a person as a human being with a different skin color versus looking at a person as different because of their skin color, in which case you don't really look at them as an equal human being to yourself because of their skin color being different. What do I mean? I happen to take a class in college called race. The, the professor's name, I have to give him props. His name was Stephen Gregory. And what he basically focused on as, as the, the point of that class is for all of us to understand that race is an economic construct. It has been developed over hundreds, if not thousands of years in which the goal is to separate people based on their skin color for economic advancement, okay? That is very different than acknowledging somebody has a different skin color than you, but they're an equal human being. So here we get into fun and truth. The, the, the fun of it is the fact that based on words and based on how you use them, you can completely fuck up someone's economic situation. However, if you look at the truth of who you are, Pat, you are an incredible human being. You just happen to have a different skin color than me. However, we get on this show and we talk about situations and, and relationships and what matters and what people are really hearing is the relationship between the two of us. That's what's important. And that's what we're really getting into is the fact that right now there is a pandemic going on in the world. Right now, there is exposure to the anger and animosity and hatred and all of these things that are going on in people's minds. And because of the pandemic, they can't hold it together. It does not matter who you are. You could be black, white, Asian, Caucasian, you know, whatever persuasion, it does not matter right now because of the pandemic, your mind is losing control of your situation because you have not had to deal with a situation like this before. In fact, nobody has. This pandemic is putting people in a place in their own mind and in their own lives that they have never been in before and they're being exposed. And there are a lot of angry people out there that are now thinking that it's okay to voice their anger. And part of it has to do with our leadership. So who's in power is basically allowing certain people to feel that they have the right to say certain things. And guess what? They absolutely do. However, historically, the reason why people have been careful not to say these things is because they know that the truth is that the things that they're going to say and the things that they're thinking are not human. They are awful things based on what goes on in their mind. They, and when I say they're not human, they have no humanity. So there is humanity in wanting to help other people. And then there is the reality of your situation. And if you're not a happy person, if you're angry, you're not going to have humanity for other people. And so now people are voicing their inhumanity. And so Karens are being exposed because Karens are afraid. I mean, 
The email literally says that Karen said she was being attacked by this family walking by her because they didn't have masks on. Can you imagine? She said this happy family. Imagine, forget about what they look like. Forget about anything to do with who these people are. It is a husband, wife, and two children that happen to be walking through their neighborhood. And this woman at a bus stop says that because they walked by her and they didn't cross the street, that they attacked her. Now, she could have stepped back. She could have been accommodating to them. But because they were happy and she was not, there was suddenly a conflict. Yeah, so what happens, we have to define attacked. Because this woman felt attacked when they moved into her neighborhood. That's right. Like that's right. You know, the pandemic, the pandemic and the mask are just a vehicle that she's using to express her rage. But the rage was there when they closed on their house however many years ago. And and the exposure is actually a good thing. Like it's troubling and it sucks, but the removal of the hoods, so to speak, yeah, is, is a good thing. Oh, they're because, intended. I love it. Yeah, yeah, pun absolutely intended. Because you are entitled to feel how you're gonna feel, but when you feel how you feel and you express it, you have to deal with that smoke that's gonna come your way, and you will get exposed. And when you're exposed. Now the world knows how to deal with you. And I think what people are finding out now is the person who gets mistreated oftentimes feels alone. But with this exposure, they're realizing they're not alone. And there's, there's strength in numbers, right? So there's a lot of people that are on your side when you feel like you're being mistreated. So the exposure is a good thing. It's difficult. There's difficult situations. But what this whole pandemic and the, co the current climate is going to give birth to a new climate where the voiceless express themselves. Right. Where, where the haters, so to speak, uh, get exposed and will be dealt with accordingly. And I know historically, uh, things have been bad for a very long time. So forgive me for being an optimist, but I have to be. Because if you're not optimistic, you can be realistic while being optimistic. I understand what we're dealing with, but I'm strong. And a lot of this family sounds strong. A lot of people are strong. And in the end, you use that strength to fight back. So let's tie this exposure, let's tie this subject into the pandemic and let's forecast the post-pandemic world and let's bring it into what we usually discuss on Fun and Truth. Okay, so you know, you and I have, have had a lot of fun with this and I'm gonna bring up our, our project simply because I want our listeners to know um, a lot of our layoff was the fact that Pat and I decided to go back through our, our past podcasts and also just really looking at, you know, situations in the pandemic. And we decided to write a book. So uh, that's coming out soon. We're, we're very excited to, uh, you know, in the next month or two, be announcing the uh, marketing of the book. Um, but it's basically going to be about relationships and really looking at the post-pandemic opportunity to improve your relationship and get into new relationships. But let's just talk about pandemic situations. You know, some of the things that we brought up were um, things like the fact that, you know, the, the pandemic exposed a lot of unhappy marriages um, versus happy marriages. Because you were locked down. Now, suddenly, a lot of men and women who were uh, otherwise not fully invested in their situation um, suddenly had a totally different situation because of this pandemic. So 
Good one. Good, good, good point to make. So I think it comes down to full time versus part time. Um, you ever have a part time job when you were younger, right? And I had a hustle. I had a couple of hustles. Right, you a part time job. It's cool, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, you, but then you turn around and get more hours, right? Yeah. And you're like, I hate this shit, right? Right. So right. relationships are very similar. Yeah. You know, you're out the house eight to ten hours. You're in New York. You're commuting what have you, if your job has you on the road. Or for, for doing uh, good work is more work. Right, exactly. So or you're on the road with your job or whatever your situation. So you live with, you share a residence with somebody, but the actual time spent on your relationship maybe is an hour or two at night, maybe, or like on the weekends, so you suddenly go from that to you're working from home or God forbid, you're not working at all, right? You might've lost your job. And now you are with this person full time. That's right. 25 hours a day, eight days a week, Hard. right? Mm -hmm. Now that changes the game. That completely changes the game. And, and keep in mind too, We've all had the coworker that after work, they want to go to the bar. They don't want to go home, right? Um, after work, they go to the gym. After work, they meet up with their friends. We, there are people that have all kinds of outlets to not deal with home. These same people now are stuck at home. Now, there are people that this is a very happy scenario, right? I'm home all the time with my lady or I'm, home one time with my man or whatever. And it's a great thing, but there are others that being stuck at home is being stuck in hell. Yeah, man. So l let me feed off of that and just point out a couple of things. If you go on Facebook uh, right now, any day of the week, the number of unhappy people on Facebook is through the roof. And a big part of it has been the fact that you know, what they have exposed or what has been exposed through the pandemic uh, is a number of people that had side chicks or side, you know, dudes, um, you know, who had, you know, uh, multiple uh, extramarital relationships. Um, and, and also that those people who were in their marriages um, that weren't dialed in, that a big part of it was that they were building towards a future and all of a sudden this pandemic created that situation where their future was now in terms of if they were planning to retire together, now all of a sudden they were faced with having to live together. And, and here's the difference of, of you know, how people look at this. A lot of people, when they decide to get married, they decide to get married because you know, the relationship is pretty good. They like each other, you know, to a certain extent, and they want to build together. But the reality is, is that they're both grinding, they're doing whatever they're doing. And, you know, they only see each other so many hours of the day and, you know, uh, whatever. But what this pandemic did is exactly as you said, it made people have to face each other and not just face each other, but look in the mirror every day. And the other person is their mirror. So now all of a sudden, it's not just do I like this person, but do I like this person when I don't even like myself right now? And, you know, that's something that really, you know, changes the game for a lot of people or has changed the game for a lot of people. And that's why, you know, we decided to work on this book because we saw that a lot of people were being exposed for the fact that they really weren't in the relationship that they wanted to be in. And, you know, that is something coming out of this pandemic is a huge opportunity for people to really look at what is it that you really want in a relationship? What is it that you really want for your future? And if you're not with the right person or if you're not with anybody right now, now is a huge opportunity for you to really think about that. But number two is that if you're not with the right person, now is the right time to actually really think about 
you know, what you want and, you know, even talk to this person. And this is the other thing that happened because of the pandemic. People had to talk to each other, Pat. And this is something that we talk about on the, you know, podcast all the time is that people don't really talk to each other. And this pandemic forced people to talk to each other and get real. And so now you have a situation where coming out of this pandemic, relationships really have a chance to get real from the start. You don't have to bring your representative going forward. First of all, you got to keep six feet away. So, so if you got to keep six feet away, when you're getting to know somebody, you might as well get real with them from the start. I think it's important to identify what's being exposed because let's say during this pandemic, things suddenly don't go well. They were going well before, but now they're not going well in your relationship. One person might correctly determine, I was never happy. I was never happy. But another person might determine, you know what? I was happy, but I lost my job. And that stress is what's ruining us. It's not that the relationship is bad, is that the stress of our financial situation made it bad. Or let's say somebody close to you fell victim to COVID-19. So you're dealing with losing a loved one. So it's not the pandemic and being home, it's that you lost someone to this deadly disease and maybe you're taking it out on your mate. So yeah, that's good. If, if there's exposure, you have to identify what exactly is being exposed because it might be a hurdle you can get over. You know, it's very, it's possible. Um, so you have to sometimes take a step back and see what exactly is, am I noticing here? What exactly are we going through? Let me jump on this because we got to wrap up soon. Um, but, but what I think my final word on this for, for our listeners is that the opportunity is really to understand that exposure is really the first snapshot that you can give somebody of who you really are going into a new relationship or even, a, and, and, and this is also just thinking about an existing relationship, there's exposure that's going on right now. And whatever negative there is between you and your partner, loved one, you know, whatever it is, you have to look at that picture and is that the picture that you want to have with that person at the end of your life? Do you want to change that frame? Do you want to change that picture and change that exposure? Because again, exposure relates to film. You can have overexposure. You can have underexposure. You can have the right exposure. And understand, you can change it at any time based on how you want to communicate, how you want to look at yourself in the mirror and show somebody who you want them to see. It's not about what they see. It's about what you want them to see. Again, we've talked about this in past relationships that you bring your representative, you show them somebody that's not really you. And then over time, you unpack your baggage and show them the real you. Post pandemic, we have an opportunity to look at our exposure and give people the exposure that we really want them to see about us. And if they don't like it, they may not be the right person for you. And you have to be able to honestly live with that because if you love yourself and you want fun and truth, you got to like your exposure. I'll, I'll say one more thing. In truth, there is fun and vice versa. You know, and it's about acceptance and outlook. Okay? Start with the truth. And then find fun in it, because if you don't laugh, you'll cry. Yeah, man. All right, people, this has been another episode of Fun and Truth in Black and White with Pat and Jay. Damn, I fumbled that, but that's all right. And we'll get back. <laughs> it's been a while. With it, but uh, we're happy to be back on the air again. We've got a new book coming out soon. We're going to be excited to share that with you. But we hope everybody is healthy, wealthy, and alive, and we're happy to, you know, have your support. Please email us, funandtruthinblackandwhite at gmail.com, uh, and we'll be putting up new episodes uh, for everybody. Love and peace.
Peace and love, y'all. Thank you.